Hey everybody, um, I've had a few people ask me how to use the uh, Emu SP12 debug ROM, um, and uh, so here's a little tutorial. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, uh, safety first, unplug your SP12, make sure there's no power going to it. You're going to take off the lid, uh, disconnect your uh, ribbon cable. Um, the manual does suggest that you go to a uh, computer store and pick up the longest cable that you can. Uh, the one that comes with the SP12 is uh, pretty small, um, so certainly if you can get yourself a longer one, it's going to allow you to uh, have your your board and your lid sit side by side so that you can work on things that way. It is a little bit easier. Um, so once you have it open and uh, you've disconnected your ribbon and you've disconnected the power for the lid you can set it off to the side. These are the uh, ROMs uh, for the OS. So I've got uh, 2.6 running in here and you'll see there's an A and in this case I have a B2. Now the only difference between B1 and B2 um, is how the OS interacts with your lid. Um, so the buttons on for your sounds uh, on the lid are going to be reversed if you're using the wrong um, OS. If you're using the B1 chip and you're actually supposed to use the B2 um, and you notice that uh, the sounds on all the pads are are flipped, um, that is is the problem. Um, I'm not sure why or what the difference is uh, as far as why they did that, but um, I do know that that's the only difference that there is between the two OS's. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, pull these EEPROMs out. Um, now there's a couple of ways to do it. You can remove the whole uh, power block. Um, there's some bolts here. Um, that red stuff on there is Loctite, so they are uh, pretty hard to move. I've removed this a couple of times, so I've left it a little on the loose side. Uh, but it is very easy to pop these out. Um, I've read some places they say use a screwdriver. Um, I would suggest that you do not. Um, if you are removing the whole power block, um, get yourself some EEPROM pullers. Um, it allows you to grab on both sides, pull straight up. It's really easy. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use, I've got some plastic tools. Um, it's non-sharp. Um, again, make sure you're using only plastic. Um, this will prevent any unnecessary scratches to your board if you are um, not too careful. Um, so when you are reinstalling, Take a look at uh, at your chips and make sure. Uh, let's see if we can see that there. See the backs of those chips? They're flat, and uh, the EEPROM debug chip. See, there's a there's a bump at one side and it's flat on the other side. So these EEPROM chips are going to have that little bump divot uh, at the top. So it's important that you. Um, you make note of which position that's in because when you replace the A chip with this debug EEPROM uh, you need to make sure that you're putting it in the right spot so I've actually pre-loosened uh, this A chip so it'll just pop out and we're gonna replace it with the debug uh, and you want to make sure that all the pins go in and that you're gentle but firm in placing it because if you are not you may bend those pins and uh, that's gonna be a big pain in your backside so once you've got it fitted it slides down and away you go so now that we've got that uh, in place, we can set the uh, original OS uh, A chip off to the side, uh, clear up any other debris, and uh, we're going to put the lid back on. So at this point, I'm going to put you on pause and uh, put the lid back on, um, and I'll show you what the display readout says. 
Okay, so we're back, and uh, we're going to boot up the uh, SP-12. And you'll see diagnostics test, enter test number. Uh, so in this case, we're going to trim the DAC, uh, or it, uh, I'm not... I don't actually need to trim this DAC, so uh, I'll just show you how to do it. Um, so the test number to trim the DAC is 15. And it actually tells you right there, trim RT1 to 800. Now, you don't actually want to trim it all the way to 800. Um, close to 800 um, is best, but exactly 800, I'm told, is, is not the best. Um, the RT1 is the only trim that you can do by hand without a voltometer or a oscilloscope, so um, be mindful of that. Don't don't go fiddling with the other ones. Uh, you may get um, results you're not expecting. So we're gonna leave the machine on. We need to find RT1. And when you open up your machine, RT1 should be right there, but it's not. In this case, it's moved over to the side. Now, earlier models, um, I've seen the uh, RT1 petitionometer right there, but um, in this case, for whatever reason, it's been moved off to the side, um, and that's where it sits. So, see that red stuff, or, or dark splotch on the side, that's Loctite? Uh, you're going to need to break that um, with your fingers first, before turning the machine on, um, and then you'll be able to adjust it much more freely. When the machine is on, do not use any metal objects uh, to adjust this. So it, it looks like you would put a screwdriver in. Do not put a screwdriver in there. That little slot, I'll show you on one of the other ones, that little slot there is actually the perfect size for a uh, wooden stir stick. So go to a coffee shop, uh, get yourself a wooden stir stick, and uh, you can pop it in there and uh, twist away. Now... You're going to want to get one of those bigger um, cables uh, if you're going to need to do this a lot. However, I've not needed to do that thus far, and as a result, what I've done is just move the lid off to the side like that. So it's, uh, it's ugly doing it this way, but um, you can access that trim in the light. You can access that trim as well as see what you're doing. So in this case, it's trimmed right now to uh, uh, 7F6, which might seem like it's an error or something. Uh, this is hexadecimal counting, so uh, the counting system goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Uh, sorry, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So F6 uh, is is fairly high, um, but not quite 800. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're doing that. If if you find something that's uh, that's a, a funky, goofy number um, with letters in there, just keep that in mind. That it's a different way to to count. It's called hexadecimal. Um, so that's how you adjust it. Uh, the RT1 is uh, moved to there. And here you can see it, twist away, and away you go. Take care.